Today's tutorial is all about adding hair and using brushes inside of Cinema 4D. Let's go. Hey everybody, it's Nick here again from grayscalegorilla.com, bringing you the tools, training, and tutorials to help make you a better motion designer. Now today's video is recorded during Ask GSG, which is where artists and designers just like you can bring your Cinema 40 questions live to us, and we try to answer them live on our Twitch channel. So if you'd like to get more info about Ask GSG and learn where you can ask your Cinema 40 questions, link it up down below. I'm also gonna link it up here in YouTube. Also, if you've missed past seasons and episodes of Ask GSG. We also have those available on our training site. We're going to link that down below as well if you're interested. All right, today's video is all about playing with hair and brushes. In fact, the brushes panel I've rarely used and Chris actually opens it up and we start to learn what we could do to manipulate hair. And in fact, what we build is a, a kind of a hay bale look out of these uh, hair and brushes. So let's, let's stop talking about it. Let's head right on in to Cinema 4D and let's see how we tackle this question. Hey everybody, welcome to another Ask GSG. Today it's me and Chris, we're in the chat room here and we're trying to answer questions in the chat room uh, like this one from Rod. Let's go check it out. Rod's been asking some great questions. You may have seen him in other Ask GSGs. Um, he linked to this uh, this render from Faux Real or For Eel. For Eel. I'm going to go for with For Real. I think he just kind of blend them together. I've seen their work around a lot. They they yeah, do some really cool stuff. Oh, really cool looking. Yeah, come check this this whole page out and uh, and and give them a give them a follow too. Their their work's really cool. Um, Rod's specifically asking about this kind of hay bale style look with what like rope going around it yeah. little plastic thing it just got a lot of little detail to it and um but it also might be uh something you know with kind of more, like one one texture that we could focus on uh in one kind of spot so let's yeah, uh gonna, you ready yeah we're focusing on the hay we'll this whole thing might dead end we're making this up as we go yeah, so we we actually <laughs> we actually uh, are not exactly sure how this is made but, but uh we're going to we're going to do our best to figure it out. So let's yeah. head on into cinema going on in here. And do it. Well, uh, first of all, let's decide the primitive, but I think that right away you should get this thing lit, like get the primitive lit and then based on that now we can start and make the hair the uh, hair, we're going to try and tackle this with hair. Ooh. Uh try and make that look more real, but we should have the basis of the lighting. So what primitive should we kind of base off of? Generically, if we're doing for going for weird shapes, I like going for the uh platonic. Yeah. And then tinkering with the uh the different primitives, you get the cool uh like dodecahedron. That one's neat, five sided. Yeah, I say pick. Yeah, let's do a dodecahedron. Let, let, I say pick one you want. Now, this is going to be a little tough because I think hair is a different thing to render and light. Very much so. Than a primitive. But I get your idea. Like, let's get some lights in the scene so we're not fighting against, um, especially if you're going to tackle this thing with hair. Uh, so we're not going to fight against it, you yeah. know? So, okay. There, there's our size. There's our. Approximate color and uh, yeah. make it look sexy. So knowing that we're going to work, or I, I guess I should ask, you you, uh, you uh, talked a little bit about maybe doing this with hair. Is that your first tackle? Or are you going to yeah, do I geometry? So. It's it, it's it's going to be, we're going to use hair and then put geometry on the hair. So we'll place it using hair, but then actual, actually render real geometry. Okay. So it, it, so I would actually tackle this slightly differently if, if you're going to use hair or geometry. So yeah, I'm going to set it up. I'm going to set it up for um, for kind of hair a little, but mostly geometry. And I'm also going to set up a camera so we're kind of facing the way the same direction sure. all the time. So the, here's our camera. I'm going to just zoom in a little bit. Not that much. There we go. And our first light is going to be um, now probably out front. And it's going to be kind of this up into the, up into the um, right light. And... You can um, uh, probably want to use area lights, although I think we're going to go in for an, another round of lighting. So I'm going to try to keep this fast rendering for you, Chris. Um, so like soft shadows. Sure. And that can get swapped later to be area or something. Yep. But... And then uh, I would say it's a global light for the rest of it. So it's very bright scene, right? So I want to take a global light and just kind of give it a general light over the whole scene like 50 or 60 percent and that's going to be everything and then i just want to see a little bit um when you get that detail in there it's also going to have a lot to do with ambient occlusion mm -hmm. so um just so we are just so we're clear like once we get all those little strands going 
we're gonna need little contact shadows between every one. So that would be like kind of my super base lighting that's gonna render really quick. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I think I would go in later and maybe replace this with a soft box or something. But I think this will be the fast way to, to start. Sure. You want to um, put a background in here so we're not rendering on black? Yeah. So we can we can kind of put our own little gradient back there. Uh, if we grab a background, background. and uh, create a new material. One thing we got to do something with a foreground. It gets no love. Foreground. What would you use a foreground for? Like a lower third know. or something? I guess. I guess After Effects is always my foreground element. You know, like that's how yeah, I after add. After Effects is your foreground. Right. Um, so we can add a gradient here, uh, and the gradients actually have like a diagonal gradient, and we could just kind of put some some fun kind of colors in here. Um, sometimes I'm stuck with this like orange to pink kind of thing. Mm, right. That's kind of your deal. I dig it. Yeah, that's, it always looks good. It always looks nice. It's kind of like pale orange to pink look. So there you go. So now we have our basic look. Um, you know, we'll, we'll swip some colors around as we go. In fact, I'm even just going to take your thing and make it a little bit more abstract um, color-wise just so we could focus on that. I think you could still do the hay, but then that way it's it's a little bit different, you know? Sure. Is that all right? All right. That's, uh, that's my super basic setup, I think. And then uh, we'll do a pass as soon as Chris. Um, what is it? Two, four. It's the fourth. Uh, as soon as Chris has some more stuff to to light, we'll tweak it. But there's always, uh, as Chris is saving stuff, it's always a back and forth between lighting and texturing, and then making your object. If you think about it in in the real world, you know, you're a lot of the times as a photographer, you already have the object in front of you, and then and then it's up to you to light that object to make it look good. And really in 3D, you're kind of working at everything at once. You're creating the object and lighting it and moving the camera around. Mm. So there's always going to be a lot of changes as those three things change. If Chris gave me this just finished, um, it would be a lot different than, you know, doing this pre-light. Sure. Just as an idea. Oh, yeah. Okay. Just but getting these basics up, like I can, I can work towards the lighting. And then once that's done, you can relight based on the geometry. So it's, it's really just going back and forth and... Doing that over and over again. I'm ready. Now we're going to try and tackle this guy with hair. I just saved it so we can screw it up and crash and then Yay. we shouldn't ruin anything. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make this guy editable and we're going to start right away by throwing hair on this guy. Um, now, if we're going to get if we're going to get really detailed and we might want to do this, we might use some hair tools that I think most of the time people don't end up playing with too much. So we're going to go to hair object, add hair, and it'll just boom, there's hair. If we get render right now, there's going to be a bunch of hairs on it. Not terribly exciting. Um, so, uh, as far as, uh, like the look here, we've got, none of these are the same. Like if you look at this one, this one's kind of pushing off to the right. This one's got a swirl in it. Uh, like this one's just kind of going left to right, like all spiky all over the place. Like every single one of these is completely different. So we'd actually, we can't just click a button and have this look like that. We'd have to do a lot of individual attention on these bits. Um, so we got, and so many decisions to make on this. First of all, first of all, we don't have anywhere near as many hairs as we need. So we can make like 10 times as many hairs, but we got to keep in mind, we're going to eventually make this geometry. So we got to keep in mind that, you know, once this is actually a bunch of polygons, it's going to really slow us down. The hair render is super quick, but, right. but the uh, geometry will not. Or at least, actually, the geometry might render relatively quick, but it's going to run incredibly slowly. Um, in addition to that, we have like how many segments we're, we're going to need, which can become really important. And then, uh, especially for this one is the length. Uh, our object is relatively small. So I'm going to change our length down to something shorter, like 50. And this giving a shorter strand. Now, uh, we could, if we were doing this with hair, we can go into the hair and right away, like maybe grab some hay like colors, which I'm just guessing here. Let's go from kind of an. Yeah, yellow to maybe an orangey or yellow and then i think we'd pull way back on the uh, specular or maybe get relatively shallow specular More dull yeah and then like we'd have to pull our thickness way up and the thickness is maintained pretty much throughout so we we could have these don't get thinner over time we could have them get like a little thinner um and then we got the overall scale like some of them are bigger some of them are smaller so we can put like a lot of variation in here so they can get bigger and smaller and let's just take a look at that. This is going to be very different than what we had a second ago. It's very silver. Nice. Um, uh, so if you pull back on the global light, Chris, you'll get more darkness on the shadows. Maybe pull that back to 30 while you're tweaking stuff up. 
and that that's okay, really yeah. popping. That. Okay, there we go. That that's that's a lot closer there. Uh, but anyways, you see our thickness is a little better, but uh, that's still what, nowhere near enough. So I'm gonna jump that to be significantly thicker. We're, we're overdoing it, and now this is if, if we were just approaching it with hair. So you might be able to get some reasonable stuff going with hair. And from here, you might think like, okay, well, there's a lot of variation. Like maybe we'll just throw some frizz on it. And uh, actually, you can probably get pretty far with something like uh, I don't think clumping would do it, but um, a kink is it might be a good one for this. Yeah, one. Kink, kink is like kink and frizz are similar. I, I think kink is closer to the base, and then frizz is more the tips. But just by frizzing that up, it's going to give us a lot of variation on top of the hair. But that's not feeling like hay at all. Like that's not helping too much. So honestly, where I'd start going from here is, um, and actually, I, we should approach this by adding a lot more guides. Right now, we only have a couple guides here. And you see, it made one guide per point. So if we set this to polygon area and we start increasing the count, it's going to start creating more and more and more hairs. If we subdivide this, if we subdivided this properly, it might actually be the best. We'll get really clean uh, distribution on this. Um, so what would be the best way to do that? Maybe if we uh, melt this whole guy or um, let's untriangulate. And I'm going to set a set it slightly larger when we create end gons. So what's going to do is going to melt away all gotcha. of those those triangles. And now if we subdivide, hopefully this works pretty well. We're going to do a regular subdivide. And it's going to subdivide into like that. And now if we do this a couple times, because our base object doesn't matter, like this geometry isn't going to be too big a deal. So now I can subdivide that a couple times. And I'm actually going to go ahead and remake the hair object. Uh, you can also regrow. That might actually work. I don't do that too often. But if we, sorry, that we got this tiny interface going on right now with our low resolution. Uh, but if we regrow, it'll actually, that's like creating a new hair. Nice. So instead of having to do that, we kept all of our settings. So we get a whole bunch of new ones. And now we can actually set this back to like polygon center and regrow. And now they should start appearing if we give them the proper count. I want to crank that way up. And now you're going to get one for every spot. So that's actually working pretty well. So now what we might start tinkering with is the brush tools. Oh. Which I don't think I don't think uh, get used terribly often. I only had to use it one time on a project because I had to get really specific. But I've always thought uh, it was a cool concept to have brushes for yeah. hair to move the hair around, but I've never had a great use for them yet. Um, but I, like I feel like this is actually a really good example. Exactly. And we, we're not gonna have enough time to give this a lot of love because you know there's a quick live tutorial. But uh, under simulate under hair tools, I tore off this menu and we get all of these cool brush options. So I can do something like grab this brush. Oh, and there's another important factor. We want to on our uh, our geometry here. I'm going to throw a hair tag, hair collider, and now we've made this geometry a collider body. Yep. And so now the hair shouldn't pass through it. Uh, and I, I think it doesn't pass pass through even as we're brushing uh, if we turn on collisions. I cool. Think. Or that might, you know, I'm not 100% on that. I, I use this too infrequently. That might be hair to hair collisions. I'm not sure. Uh, so you should save this right here. I should totally save this right here. Boom. Uh, okay, I'm going to try and mess it up and see what happens. I'm going to just brush weight right through. And look, it is working. Like oh, I, I sweet. think those hairs did not pass into the geometry. That's So great. that's exactly what we want. Um, so I'm going to undo. And now... Uh, there, there's just there are there's a, this huge suite of tools that aren't used because how often do you actually have to really get down and dirty with the hair? Um, so right now I could like start gently brushing these specific ones, and wherever my brush hits, they will be affected. So I have to be really careful about uh, the angle. You see that I kind of leveled off the camera, so we're viewing it from this side. Yeah. And let's say this one, over, and then even that we lost that hair. And I think if you use a small bracket, we can increase or decrease the size here. Oh, cool. That works on everything, actually. Uh, but if I make it small, I can grab just that one kind of straight. And keep in mind, these are guides. Everything else interpolates between them. So we might actually have some trouble with that as well. But I kind of pull that guy here, and let's say these are going to get swept this way a little bit. And so we could spend hours and hours brushing hair. Now and you it, can it also really curl well. and clump and stuff. Have yes. you seen what those do as well? I've, um, I've played a little bit with those. I'm actually not entirely sure. Okay, this is going to affect everything. But let's say we want this one to be swirled around. So I'm, I'm actually going to go to our simulate hair selection tools. And I'm going to rip that off. Why did it not rip off? Uh, simulate hair. Tear off. Cool. Uh, I'm going to do something like a rectangle selection. and Actually, I guess I'll do a lasso. And I'm going to say I only want to deal with these points. Cool. 
And now I don't know how the swirl works entirely, so or the curl. So let's just click and see what happens. And whoa, that's whoa. crazy. Curls so it's it. twirling around there. It looks like every individual hair is twirling, which is interesting. Um, which isn't actually necessarily what we want. We get some nice curls there, but let's say that we actually want these to kind of spiral around. Uh, if I don't, I don't see a specific way to do it. So, oh, oh we have, we also have to restrict by restricting. Now this should only nope. That apparently wasn't it. Uh, visible only, lock on hair, selection only. There it is. Selected only. There. Okay, now only the ones I've selected. So we'd actually have to go through and kind of Ooh. paint in the swirl. Now, you see, it wasn't terribly hard to do. I like the swirly one. Um, so, but I mean, like I, I have spent, on the project I had to do this, I spent hours combing a character's hair for like a still. <laughs> and then you can get like any hairstyle you want. It's amazing. Did you and ever think that you would spend hours combing hair when you got into virtual 3D? hair? 3D. Yeah. <laughs> when you do 3D, you do a little bit of everything. <laughs> um, that's so awesome. yeah, so that that's working. If I I can actually use regular selection tools. So if I command A, it'll actually select all the points again. Cool. Um, so I can you know go through and just add, let's just add a little variation here. Like effectively, we only want actually what's the angle you pin? Okay, this one. So let's make it look good just from this angle. Sweet. Um, so let's get this one doing something. So I'm going to try maybe brushing that one back a little, and then near the top it'll kind of swirl down, down here. Um, let's have this one kind of push forward. I like all this hand randomness. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of tools in cinema that you can click on and have it be random, but it's kind of like based on a noise random, you know? Yeah. And the fact that you're getting in with your with your mouse and, like, just ra <laughs> kind yeah, of randomly doing something and... is giving it this, more, I think, more human feel yeah. um, once we hit render. Like, I mean, like, I don't know. I would think, like, this is where you're doing the art part of it. Is, you right. know, like these – I mean, I'm all about doing things parametrically and procedurally. But, like, here, I mean, to do a lot of this, you just have to – you just have to paint it. Now, I have no – this might be awful. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's but let's see. just go ahead and go to our proper camera angle and hit render and see what we have now. I think this camera got moved a little bit, but uh, I, I kept delinking from it. Oh, it obviously must have. <laughs> I got undo camera view. Oh, that's not gonna work. Yeah, just kind of center it. It's not a big uh, deal. Go back over here. Oh, uh, yeah. So let's render our hairs and see what we're getting. So uh, we're actually getting some cool flow here. Like, like the, we're definitely getting the swirl vibe, and these are pushing around. Like that's actually working pretty well. Yeah. Um. Now the big problem is that the hair is just not gonna render to look like hey that much. Like we could probably push it further and tweak and whatnot. But what we actually are going to need is geometry. Yeah, and the other thing you're n never gonna get with hair is the anti-aliasing, or I'm sorry, the uh, ambient occlusion between it. Yes. And that is gonna be a big part of this look is getting all those little detailed shadows that you, as far as I know, can't do with a hair renderer. You the, gotta use geometry. Yeah, the uh, hair, hair gives you good volume, but the volume is like, between hairs any individual hair can't have a volume really um let's see and there's a bunch of tools here like I, this area was starting to look a little bare so you can actually go back to i haven't used this in years but one of them is comb curl cut push oh straighten by using the straighten tool oh that's on everything currently selected so if we if i did a live selection and just grab a couple of these guys not visible only. Can you grab a couple of these guys? I can actually go to the straighten tool, and as I drag, they actually start slowly reverting to their original position. Whoa. So, like, if you push it down a little too much, like, you can pull them back that way. Um, okay, cool. So, uh, we're actually going to save this as another version because we're dealing with a lot of potential geometry here. So, we are now going to go into the hair object, and instead of rendering hair, we are going to go to the generate tab. I'm going to say, don't render the hairs anymore. And we're going to say, what is this now? So we could say, uh, let's try doing something light to see if it's, like, super complicated. So I'm going to do a triangle. So what this should be doing in theory Ooh. is changing <laughs> every single hair to a triangle sweep. So we have real geometry now. And actually, that's running incredibly fast. This is the same concept we use in the pillar render, that's but those amazing. were straight. And because they're hair, it only has to calculate that one time. Um, so we actually get incredibly fast refresh. So I thought this would be really bad. It's actually working really well. It's amazing. Um, so uh, let's go from triangle to a circle. Hopefully it's not – it's going to be a lot heavier, but hopefully it's not super heavy. Boom, it popped, and now that it popped, it's going to refresh, and we could see all of it really accurately. 
Now we can, we can go into the advanced tab and I can put a start cap or an end cap. We want end caps, which it's going to take a second for it to calculate and then it's going to be fast again. So now we get, we get this and now we actually have the caps on there. Now the caps are there. They're welded automatically. So we're getting some fong problems. So the way we fix that, I think, is we can actually, oh, it's got a fong tag. So if I just limit our fong angle and our limit is really high right now. So if I set that to something like 22, my favorite fong limiting angle, hopefully that will boom pop in. Actually, it was a little too small. Um, so let's go up to like 45. Anything under 90 would really work. Um, and that should smooth that out properly, and we still get our hard edge. Cool. Um, now, I suggest when you're combing your hair and whatnot, it's going to take this long to refresh. Every change we make is going to take that long to refresh, and then run quickly, but every refresh will take a while. So only show this geometry once you're kind of down to like, okay, what is it rendering like? Um, but now what's super cool is all of this is still controlled via this hair. So even though the hair is not rendering, if we throw, if I just turn on frizz, it's going to take a second. But if you watch the viewport, no way. Boom, no way. All the frizz pops in. So we can now add a little bit of randomness on top of what we are doing. So uh, maybe the frizz isn't good because it affects the end points a lot. Um, but if we maybe we can put a little bit of kink in there. Let's see if that looks any good. I don't know. Yeah, super spaghetti e. Um, so we might be able to put like a little bit of variation in there. Like uh, these are the scales. The scale seems all right, um, but if we just put maybe like ten percent with a lot of variation, that means some of them might stick out and some of them won't. Um, there, up there. Okay, well that's not bad. Like a little bit of variation in there, uh, and then something like clumping might actually be pretty good. Uh, this is the radius of which it tries to clump. I'm not sure what our overall scale is, so it would be kind of. Um, just grabbing the dark, but oh, it even does count based on percentage, which is cool. That means if we increase the hair count, it doesn't mess up our clumps. But by turning on clumps, it'll actually pinch a couple clusters together. Um, and uh, let's push it super far just so we can kind of see what it's doing. Um, so by pulling this up, look, you see that we start getting all these nice little pinchy swirls going, which is really, really cool. Uh, I don't know if that, you know, I obviously went way it's like far. The, it's to like do the that. dirty hair button. Yeah. <laughs> they, like you just came out of shower and it's all spiky kind of thing. So we could do a little bit of clumping and whatnot. Um, so that's working pretty well. Now, a big thing in our reference is we're, we get like big fat pieces of, of hay and we get these tiny little thin ones. So we really want to try and get that variation in here. So I think we can probably do that via our thickness. And here's our, our variation. I'm not 100% if the variation is global or additive. So if I turn on four. Would you get zeros? Yeah, do we get zeros? So, um, it seems I don't know. I'm going to hit render. Pretty subtle. Um, so obviously it's taking a little while to prepare. Not sure. Yeah, I, I guess that's a big question. I mean, I guess it's having to calculate shadow maps for all this and... Yeah, it's um, going to be a lot of geometry yeah. for the for the lighting. So we, we may have to retackle the lighting just based on the geometry of this. Yeah, or and, we may and have to bake it out. Um, yeah, yeah, we can make this editable, and then we won't have to do that pre calculation. So once we're kind of happy with it, we could be like, okay, here's the done. This one's done. It's also um, doing a ton of anti or uh, I keep saying anti aliasing today, but I mean ambient occlusion. Yeah, so that if you one's just, going real like it's pretty much stopped dead from all the uh, ambient. So yeah, you're also using the local machine which is only one set to oh, one core yeah, that is true so always do um, a team render okay I, i'll leave that bit to you um and even now as we're doing these tweaks like that looks really cool but we can easily go back into our hair and this is like all we did was was brush our guides which means we can still change the number of hairs whenever we want so i can go back in here and knock off one of these zeros and that means it'll be showing a tenth the number of hairs wow. and we can really quickly work with it and uh, I, I don't know, but if I hit render, uh, hopefully this would calculate really quick. Like, immediately went to shadow maps, and it's immediately jumping oh. here. And now it's – I didn't change any render settings, but there's so much – there's not as much geometry, so it's going to calculate everything way faster. That was great. Um, so we could, we could always even light it with these numbers Yep. and then crank it up. Exactly. Um, now, uh, it's hard to – oh, yeah, we were checking on the thickness, and it does seem like we have some pretty dang thin ones. Um, so maybe, maybe that's exactly what we want. Uh, I'm just – just for the sake of learning, let's crank it up to something huge like 12. Oh, yeah. oh now we're getting real-time feedback. So now we get these big old fat ones, and we get some really skinny ones. Um, honestly, oh, it's something I didn't know, and it's a little disappointing, actually, is this is adding variation to both the root and the tip. So we got to keep that in mind because you'll see this one starts out super skinny and then gets all fat, and that's weird. 
Um, and it's just because it's adding that kind of variation to both of them. So, uh, and this curve will only apply to the global. So that's just something to keep in mind. It's just a limitation we're going to be dealing with here. Uh, in addition to that, we also have our scale. And if we turn on scale variation, it'll actually randomly make, it'll just take the entire hair, hair and scale it up and down. Hmm. Um, that might be what more of what we need than the, <clears throat> than the thickness. Yeah, thin and thick is, is important. Um, but I think visually that's going to do enough for us. Um, so adding this kind of variation there for scale. Once again, I'm going to crank that up crazy eyes so we can see all the variation. Or we get these little stumpy hairs and we get even longer ones. So it does push up and down. Cool. Um, probably don't need it quite that far. I'll pull it back. And yeah, that's actually working pretty well. Now what's going to be really cool is this is, we get to texture the real geometry. Um, and I, I, I still I almost feel like we should drop that back down to a triangle. Uh, I want to go I, to a different display mode, and I, let's see how many polygons this is actually giving us. I actually think the triangles would re even render nicer because that hay is really kind of a flat. Yeah. You know, it's really a flat piece if you look at the original or, or if you just picture like a piece of grass. It's really kind of a two-dimensional, you know, um, it's really kind of more like a paper than it is a round kind of thing. Yeah, so this gives us a little bit of volume, and it will go a lot faster. We have a lot less geometry. Yeah. Now, that this is how much geometry we have kind of spinning around it, but how many segments we have, which is adding a lot of geometry, is determined in our hair tab. In our hair tab, we have the number of segments, and we have 12, and there would be 12 subdivisions in here. So if I were to drop that down to 8... Like, you'll see it immediately drops, and if you don't need, like, if we have a bunch of curly, twisty hairs, you need a lot of geometry. But if you don't, if it's smoother, then then you can actually get away with this. And we just knocked out a ton of the geometry from the scene, and visually, I don't think it's going to make that huge of a, look how fast that's rendering now. Like, in before, even with a lower number, it was taking a lot longer to render. Now, I've clearly rotated this to oblivion, but... Uh, What's really cool now is we will be texturing this via normal materials. Like we're just we're just texturing a sweetener at this point. Oh, I'm pumped. Now. Um, I'm pumped. So honest. Well, honestly, uh, like this is really cool. They obviously did their homework as far as making hay look correct. I I would tend to I would see go how, Google. See how square that looks. Like uh, I can't point at the screen, bro. If you could point at that piece, see how like that almost looks like a square, or even it might even be yeah. a triangle. It's like really flat feeling. Like, it has definite sides, like that little one sticking straight up, the little alfalfa piece there. Sure. Uh, hay, is that how you spell the bale for a hay bale? Oh, I I do not know. Well, it worked anyway. Uh, but what I would do is instead of referencing theirs directly, we could, like, maybe Google different pictures of, of hay. Oh, yeah. And now, now we have this. And now we're not referencing their image directly as far as, uh, like, maybe sourcing colors. And I, I love sourcing colors. Yeah. So if I were to pull this down, I can... Um, actually, we want variation in here. So how would we tackle variation per hair outside of a MoGraph context? It won't the hair uh, – so the hair – the hair settings are doing everything except texturing it. Correct. Is that true? Is there any way to handle that? Mm, no no variation within it. It would have to be just based on the specular angle, I guess. Well, here, here's my – And some noise. Here's my thinking, Chris. I really don't think there's going to be a lot of individual differences. Yeah in the texture so i would actually just make it one color sure let's and we're going to use ambient occlusion and specular uh to create the variation based uh, on lights and reflections and all that so uh something i get to show off here is right now on the mac if i click to grab a color this is cinema's color picker but i actually like the system color picker a lot more so i'm going to go into file and actually edit preferences and then if we go to units I can click Use System Color Picker, and now when I click, I'm going to move Cinema out of the way. Now when I click the little image, it picks up the, it opens the Mac one. If you're on a PC, you're, you're still kind of screwed. But I can man. click, I can click this magnifying glass, and I can go over here and pick the exact color from anywhere on the screen. So I want to kind of find a midpoint here, not the brightest, not the darkest, and it, oh, it's almost good. never the color you think it would. I w I thought there's a lot more yellow in here, but that's actually very kind of a uh, kind of peachy. Yeah. Um, and we can always, you know, kind of manage the expectations. Like maybe we do put more yellow in there. But I could just take this material, throw it directly onto this object. And Boom. I, I guess I am kind of expecting a little more yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a little extra in there. Um, so that's going to turn into a lot of, uh, like, reflectance and getting the ambient color going. And, um, yeah, just a lot of fun texture stuff. So I might be able to pass this off over to you now to do a little bit more lighting and 
all that good stuff. I can always jump back in the texturing. We're starting to get a little faceting on the uh, curve, so I'm actually going to go back into the hair and go back up to the 12 segments, but not the triangle. We'll leave the triangles. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and save that, and now you can take over and maybe do a little bit of texture sure. slash uh, lighting. I guess we can close those uh, those uh, paint Close these the, out. The brush tools. So the thing the thing to me before I get into textures and lighting, I'll just grab your opinion on, on this, Chris. The more curly and wavy it is, the less hay it is to me. Like the more of sure. this. Um, yeah, did you the kinks off. Is that the kinks yeah, that's doing kinks. that? Now you get the nice smoother curves. Yeah, this feels more... Um, because I think the the thing with hay is that as soon as it's bent far enough, it's going to break. So you're really getting swirls of straight pieces, sure. if that makes sense. Like it's all – if you if you look at each individual piece, um, you're going to see a straight piece, but they're all coming together to create a swirl, no, if that, that makes that sense. Is, that is very true. I mean, even along those lines, let's try uh, – look, I'm going to take over again just yeah. real quick. If we drop these segments down to like one, yeah. then we're literally going to have a straight – piece and Boom. these are all now super straight and if we i mean i think if, two, we, if maybe. we had two then but that means that they're all gonna have like a kink right in the middle oh they uh, all which will. might uh i mean let me hit render real quick and just see what that does but yeah now now we have a series of if we get the bend it's not too bad but you see get we the, get the you swirls get, you get that harsh band the bend but if we go down to one then literally these are all straight pieces but we don't lose the swirl so here here's my theory if we keep it at one and we Second of all, cheat a bit and texture our inside oh, piece with the same texture. But then go back and add more hairs. Yes. Uh, You're going to click on the hair object itself. Maybe on the final and render. Right there, the added zero. So once we get more hairs in here, I'm just going to turn off our uh, ambient occlusion just for a kind of a quicker render here. But watch. I think this is going to give us our kind of like – straight hair piece now there's not a lot of detail because of the ambient occlusion stuff but once this is on and i haven't tested the team render with this yet but we'll see if it works it's definitely too big but i think all that little detail that's going to help a lot yeah, we're looking a little more like spaghetti than hay right now but it's yeah. a lot of texturing stuff where we might want to put a little luminance in there because you know there's a transparency to it and I don't know why that's not working huh. the uh, but like right I mean, I really there like, like that's our some... best piece yeah um, all right, so here's here's how I would approach it. I would say um, this the just real quick the thickness. I would just drop this stuff down. Oh, <laughs> two point <laughs> five. Drop this down, um, and then once we get kind of a good, uh, once we get kind of a good um, uh, render with basic lights, then we can start to go in and do more. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn our render settings. A little bit lower, just so we could see them quicker, and you guys could view it with us uh, in the in the picture viewer. So here we go, picture viewer. Put down, my man. So now we're talking, and we we lost your ambient light because I pulled that way back. So we're getting really dark in some of those areas. Yeah. So that so instantly I would pump the global light back up to get a real nice base kind of level color. What was that? Boom. I always miss it. Option. Control tab. Control tab. Boom. Did it. Yeah. I, I already filled it out a little bit more. Yeah. So already you could see the difference between without the global light and with the global light. Uh, and then we're relying on the ambient occlusion to really fill in the, the gap. Um, the next thing is specular. So you can see when light hits hay like this, it's going to really bling it out. Um, so it's got a lot of specular. Now we can do this with reflection true reflection with re with reflectance and all that stuff but when you have this much detail um this it's actually where specular does uh make more sense so, oh well, the blurry reflection on this would be absurd yeah so um i'm gonna go into our default specular that's already built in now um the only spec it's going to grab is this one light. So we might want to add some other lights, maybe that are just specular. And I do this a lot with hair so um, and, I, and like multiple uh, things like this. So I'm just going to crank up, first of all, our specular. I'm not going to make it white. So I'm, I, I do want it in the color family, mm -hmm. but I want to skew it into that color so it's not a white specular. This already helps specular a lot if you just make it not white. Um, and then I'm going to add another light that is only a spec light. Now we could add it and add shadows and maybe we'll, we'll need that, but I'm just going to go here and turn off diffuse. So it's not going to give it any more light 
uh, anywhere. It's only going to add specular hits. So I'm just going to grab that light and move it over and behind and up. So I'm going to kind of move my camera for now and make sure kind of this is where I'm looking at it. I'm going to look from above and make sure that it's kind of off to the side, but it has to be above it because we're, we're trying to make like kind of a rim light out of spec. And the way that that looks, hopefully, is all this stuff will kind of get brighter. So let's do a let's do a render with our specular cranked up. We have our rear spec. We have all this stuff happening. And then let's just do a kind of compare and contrast. So there you go. You can see the spec popping onto that um, uh, texture there. We also um, lost our rear specular mostly because we have no no shadow. So you do want to make sure your shadows are on, or else it'll just pop specular on everything. We can also brighten this up. Uh, and in this case, because we're using such flat objects, this rim light effect might not work as well as I thought. There's really no rounding happening, especially on this side. They're kind of sticking well, uh, out straight. Along those lines, though, wouldn't it maybe catch individual hairs better instead of, like, transitioning between them? Maybe even kill the other lights so we can see just what that one is doing. Oh, that's a good idea. So here's a render with just our rim light. I'm going to turn it up just so we can see its effect. And we're trying to build a rim around the object to give it kind of a more of a, a, fu a fuzzy feel. And we're oh, really only okay, catching yeah. it right here. So I think I'm just going to cheat it um, and pull forward and just kind of off to the side more instead of to the front. And that might grab even just small. We'll be able to see this really quickly. That's that's the rim right yeah. there, see? So at that scale, you know, it's all about scale. At this scale, it's going to it's going to be a lot cleaner now. Let's turn that other light on and we could balance the two lights. But now we have a, a little bit more sense of depth because we have this kind of hot spot here that's coming through and then we'll have our front piece. So that might be a little little warm uh, or a little bright. So let's knock that to 150. Let's turn on our other light and see how they combine. That's looking pretty good in places. Now, I think the ambient occlusion overall is just too much. Mm -hmm. um, the thing to remember with ambient occlusion is it's all about scale. So a default cube, I always pull a default cube into my scene when I'm working with ambient occlusion. A default cube is 200 by 200 by 200 centimeters, right? Which means if you take a plane and you put it at the bottom of a cube and you make sure there's enough room out front here. Let's just go zoom in here. And we hit render. Now I should probably make a new white material. There we go. Well, one more quick render. So we have our plane, we have our cube, and the ambient occlusion is looking at these contact shadows and trying to add shadows as they get closer together. By default, ambient occlusion is looking 100 centimeters, which means the furthest the shadow will go is halfway up this um this object, right? So that is a lot of calculations to worry about, and it's also way more than any individual one of our hairs is making for detail. So we can turn that number down, like 10. This will do a couple things. It will, let's just do a render here, and we'll compare and contrast on the, on the um, plane. Now we just get a little baby contact shadow. Here's the bigger one, here's the little one, and it's going to render faster. It's not going to calculate as much. And you can see already over here, it's not pulling as much detail into our thing. So we're going to have to find the balance. But I think that's going to be an important setting for us. So let's go back to our camera. Let's turn off our little settings here. I already know it's going to be higher than 10. But we could find a balance maybe in 30 and with more contrast. So it's a little darker. So let's do a look here. I think that's going to help our render times for sure. And it's going to give us a little bit more detail in, in in between each individual piece the other cheat here is that black is a little bit heavy you can see there's really no black you almost never get black and it's also like it seems like the shadows are quite red actually yeah it, it so it's gonna it's gonna base a lot on some of the colors but it's also the perception of that black on top of the object so what you could do with ambient occlusion at all times is look at your shadows 
where, what does your environment look like? You could either pick a color from the environment like this, or you can just pick a color of the object. Picking a, if, if, if the object is all the same color, if your ambient occlusion, remember, is, is a pass that goes on top of everything. So you really have to m make sure that your, your shadows and everything are, are almost gonna be one color. But think about it, your environment, and then just pick a color that's more in line with that. So we can pull this up, and we know it's in this family over here. It's in this brown kind of family. And we can pull this down, and now our shadows are gonna be that color. Just pulling up a little bit from black is gonna do a lot of work to make it less uh, dark. So you can see the difference right in the middle there. We could probably even brighten it up more. But see how much more yellow that is feeling? Mm -hmm. That's the right, that's the right uh, move. We could even brighten it up even more. So we nothing will be uh, darker than that color. We just won't let it allow it. Now, with the contrast, we might have pushed it that way. But now let's compare the two. There's black, much brighter. Yeah, nice and warm. Almost like a subsurface scattering kind of feel because that's really what you're trying to find is the, is the inside color of this. Um, the other thing you could do is play with your global light. So if you really want it to be brighter, you can just pull up that global light, and now everything's going to get light and the ambient occlusion will be added on top of that or, you know, like multiplied on top of it. So subtle difference, but now we're just bumping that whole thing up. Boom, boom. There you go. So a lot of little details for each one of those. Um, this kind of specular over here is just still not my favorite thing um, I've ever done. So I'm just going to move it. We're actually getting some specular detail in our on our object. If we turn off that that lighting there we can actually dial up or down the specular and find a good spot for it now because all these little hairs are moving all all around the place we may we may find a weird place for this but let's see what that looks like i, I don't i don't even know if there's a setting for this in fact i'm gonna look at my laptop while you're doing this but if we can t randomly twist those hairs around then they could each individually be catching speculars better or right now they're kind of being caught in clusters so let me let me try and see if i can find that well we have thickness length scale that's fine. Density, you doing you're doing. clump, bend, twist. We could maybe twist. It looks like they are twisting. So well, if the checkbox isn't on, it won't be twisting. Oh, I see. And give it lots of variation, and we that might that might actually do a lot. Uh, twist. Uh, I'm not sure if twist is doing what we think. It might actually twirl them together. Mm, I see what you're saying. Yeah. But without without a lot of geometry, though, Chris, as well, uh, without all the individual what do you call them the sections that you made for this yeah. i'm not sure that it will the segments I'm, I'm thinking maybe the segments will keep it from twisting since we only have one segment per piece uh, I, I just mean the overall sweep would be twisted oh each one yeah each one but I, i'm gonna look for a setting so you just keep doing what you're doing all right hopefully uh yeah and chris is talking about having each little french fry here see how they're all aiming in the same direction chris is going to look for a way so that each one is pointing a, a little bit more randomly. But I think we're pretty close with um, with this here. Uh, if you want a more of a light source like this, um, you might want to try like a, a larger, you know, light, like a softbox kind of kind of look to get more of the reflections and everything. But this gets pretty, pretty close. Um, while Chris is messing with that, I just wanted to uh, try one thing that I wanted to try this whole time which is uh, basically duplicating this Found it. platonic here. And just I'm going to take everything off of it, and this is just going to be a guide. I'm going to scale this up, and I'm going to um, – uh, oh, can I melt this back down to its individual polygons or not? Yes. Uh, Right-click and go to untriangulate. All right. I could do that. Oop. Nope, you missed it. You don't lose the polygons. That's what happens when I right click. Oh, uh, here I can do it. My right. I'm going <laughs> to right click. I'm going to. Uh, this this works a lot better with a mouse. Boom! That should melt down. Actually, it's going to give us these extra points, but I don't think you care. I don't think it, it matters. All I wanted to do was um, do a uh, a quick um, uh, atom array uh, on the platonic. Oh, that those those will matter. So yeah. you just make a new one. Yeah, make a new one. Yeah, we we'll just make a new one. And that was a buckyball? Do dodecahedron. Dodecahedron? 
We'll just scale it up, make sure it's the same scaling. Everything's perfect, boom. We'll just dump that in instead. And now oh, we'll have to melt those pieces, but that is a really quick way to get that um, mesh around it that uh, I know we didn't really get to, mm. but that would be the fast way to do it is to um, use, a, use an atom array. Just want to play with that. Yeah. Uh, well, all right, yeah, what did you we, get? We might actually be able to, if we gave our stuff a bunch of segments, we might actually be able to squish the hairs in dynamically. We're not going to tackle that, but it, there is possibilities for that. Uh, anyway, to get these randomly rotating, uh, really straightforward, all I have to do is go back to the Generate tab, go to Alignment, and set it not from free, but to random. And now each one of them is randomly oh. trained. And now the instant we do that, we're going to have a, the specular is going to be completely different. It will, but I think this is going to be a, a critical move. Look at that. Yeah, there we go. Wow, that made a huge difference. Critical move. Look at that. Between real flat kind of pieces, well, and now all of a thing, sudden it's all more. Look main, at how random that yeah, is. The main thing being, when you look up here, you see how like this this highlight is like this big, big glaring highlight in one particular spot. As soon as we randomly rotate, it gets spread out among all of its neighbors. Oh, dude. This, see, this makes me want to kind of tint that that specular a bit. Now we can really dial dial this specular. Um, and find a, a place for it. So yeah, you're just, even getting really good real time feedback on that. Yeah, we're getting we're getting some good good feedback here. Now we can make this even more of like a fuzzy um, specular, and not as much of a just like a side kind of afterthought. Mm -hmm. I think this might actually make it look a little bit more fuzzy in the back. Yeah, those little catches right there. Man, that's that's the that's the thing for me. Like all those little, um, all these little like fuzzy thing. And this is gonna, anytime you have hair, a backlight is always gonna make these little edges pop like that. Um, but man, I think that's pretty close, buddy. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, we like if I was trying to recreate that image, or if that was a job, like you spend five more hours doing things. Uh, I was thinking about if we wanted to get additional variation in the size and whatnot, we could actually copy the hair object, have multiple hair objects. Yeah, multiple hair objects means we could have darker strands of hay and lighter strands of hay. I mean, look at the specular, and that's super broad. Like, yeah, that could be too. You know, maybe we maybe we do a last minute check on the specular because that's going to do a lot of, of difference so it, maybe instead of it being so high it's got a little bit more yeah, like a little more squarish and that's going to really bling out the the spec uh on more pieces you're just going to see more of it or more of it and it's going to be a, a lot brighter so there's a good difference between the two much brighter overall i think you're right that's that broad spec is a thing the other thing i would do and, and all of these are last minute things, right? Um, I try this all the time when I'm playing with uh, hair and all these kind of things. I know we're not actually rendering hair, but it's with all these different particle kind of things, I'm going to, I'm always going to try these, these last minute tries. So I'm going to turn off diffuse. I'm going to try to find another good place for specular. Maybe it's actually from below because it's a little bit dull on the bottom and then just try like a slightly different color. So there we go, same camera angle, same everything. And we're gonna go, because of our specular settings, we can just pick up a little bit more detail on the bottom there. See how it filled in the bottom just by adding that spec? And actually, we have to turn on at least some soft shadows because it's really adding spec to everything, even stuff above it. So you wanna make sure you at least have some soft shadows on so that the specular is not, again, hitting everything on the object. It's only where the light is. Sure. So now we can compare. These we're, we're we're getting down to these little subtle moves. Yeah. I think Chris, what you're saying is we can tweak each one of these little hairs a million different ways to make it look a little tighter to, to this original. But I think the concept, other than you know, I'm seeing maybe some some size things we could try, um, maybe l even smaller, um, but then with more hairs, which we could add even more hairs right now, couldn't we, Chris? Yep. Well, actually, before you do that, uh, let me take it real quick. Yeah, go ahead. What I was going to say is, uh, like, when we look here, you see we get these cool little, like, random guys shooting off in the middle of nowhere. Like, doing that would be crazy easy. All we have to do is copy the hair. We have a complete duplicate. But this is way too many. Um, so now we can uh, drop this down to, like, 500. So it's very few. And we'll also copy this hair material. And I'll put that on the copy. And we'll... Uh, We'll just call these uh, the stray hairs. Great idea. And now here, I can here now we go and we'll turn on the frizz and we'll turn on the kink 
And now those guys can get pushed way, way the heck crazy. And hopefully they're, yeah, I, I'm not, let's turn it on and off and see if we see them. Yeah, see these crazy guys off to the edge? And in fact, we can go and uh, make these longer. So I'm going to grab these and say, okay, these crazier ones are a little bit longer. There's very few which should add almost no render time. Um, right. There's 500 crazy random hairs on top of it. And and what's cool is it, it, and we could copy our original hair thing, add a little bit of variation on it, and we could have two different textures. Oh, on yeah. It. We could. Uh, that's how you get the variation on them. You can make multiple hair objects. Well, I'm going to hit render, see what we got. I think that hair, that strand thing is a great, great tip, man. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I can just see it sticking out. Yep. Yo. Wow, that goes a long way. Random hairs, buddy. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, I think the scale here is is a little nice too. And I mean, we we spent like no time combing it, so it's getting all getting fluffy up. over there. And if we, and you can actually in the, you can right now we are just painting the hair tips. You can paint every individual segment of the hair. Like if we did put those strands, you can actually paint like the points that are intersecting it down to be avoided like the, the hairbrush is is pretty huge like you can do a lot with it dude this is this is fun man uh i like this one a lot i uh we might have to leave it here uh let's do one more last big render here let's um yeah i mean we've, we've been talking about this for almost an hour and but like, like we're saying keep in mind that we if we were doing this for real for a client or something you easily spend another five hours like tweaking and oh let's try round hairs oh let's try putting a custom spline in there so they're like maybe right. rounded but squished like they were stepped on and uh I, I don't know like and then combing you know i spent another two hours combing this thing wow this is cool dude very very good um well i hope uh i certainly learned something <laughs> just watching chris make this thing uh hopefully there was some some stuff in there if you've played with hair and haven't really taken it this far which i never have i didn't I knew you could put geometry on it, but I had no clue it would be that fast. Um, and it actually moves fast once we get it in the viewport, once it refreshes, right? Yeah. We Like, we get it. Yeah, when we change a, a number, it's going to be like, uh, okay, got it. But after that, you can fly through it. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Hey, if you have a question for Ask GSG, don't forget to stop by live Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Central to ask your Cinema 40 question live on our Twitch page. I'm gonna link that down in the description. And again, if you've missed old seasons or past episodes, please check out our training page where you can get all of those to watch at any time and on any device. All right, with that, I hope to see you in another tutorial really soon. Bye, everybody. Hey, I need a, anyone got a brush? Can we go close up? That's some hair, folks. We need this tutorial. Yeah. Mm.